Zoth Teek, Postscript, Will Murray. Perhaps it is only fitting that a story cycle so preoccupied with doom and loss would be haunted by the shades of lost and fugitive tales. Ashton Smith maintained in his so-called Black Book a running list of stories entitled Tales of Zothik, his intended collection title, which lists several phantasmally elusive stories. In it is logged nearly every story written, started, or even contemplated for the series. It presents a knotty bibliographic problem in that Smith did not differentiate between these very different categories. Between The Voyage of King Everon and The Weaver in the Vault, Smith listed a tale called The Madness of Chronomage. No such story or manuscript exists. Only the following plot germ survives. A king who beholds a vision not shared by others and passes into the vision in his hour of need. The seventh item on the list is called Kamamagos, but was crossed out and a new seventh story, The Weaver in the Vault, is substituted. Nothing more is known of this phantom. A tantalizing quote from a mystic work called The Testaments of Kamamagos heads Zithira, however. It is a dark Necronemicon-like volume, also mentioned in two non zathikian tales, The Treader of the Dust, and the Infernal Star, the latter a fragment which mentions Zothique, but is not of the cycle, and so is not included in this collection. In The Treader of the Dust, Kamomagos is an ancient Greek seer of evil repute. It is interesting to wonder if The Treader of the Dust may have been a Zothique conception culled from the series, just as The Voyage of King Everon was transplanted from the Hyperborean cycle. In a letter to Lovecraft dated September 1, 1933, CAS reiterated an intention previously made to Derleth. With the completion of two more tales, The Madness of Chronomage and Zathira, I shall have enough stories of Zothtik for a volume. Nothing remains except to find a publisher, which, methinks, will be a contract. Zathira was not written for another six months, however, and is entered in Smith's Zotique log as the ninth story. Subsequently, Smith expressed his satisfaction that the completion of Zathira and The Last Hieroglyph gave him his needful quota of Zothique tales suggesting he had completely abandoned any plan to pin the madness of chronomage once he had a more appropriate final tale. Certain thematic similarities between Zathera and the madness of chronomage may have made the latter redundant. Only two pages survive of the 1935 fragment Shapes of Adamant, yet Smith claimed to have composed 1,000 words. So we must assume two or three lost pages. A clue as to why Smith gave up on this story is suggested by a July 1937 comment to Robert H. Barlow. There is small chance that any professional magazine would care for an opus of such mystical and fantastic nature, involving four avatars in a future continent. Smith had contemplated sending the story to Barlow's amateur magazine, Leaves. Another lost item is The Alkihest, known to have been plotted and begun in August 1937. Only the plot survives. Bithreem, alchemist and magician, believes himself about to discover the Alkihest. At this juncture, however, he is arrested with his pupils and arraigned before the inquisitors of the goddess Cathruel, who accuse him of sorcery and the corruption of the young. By means of a chemical, concealed in a snuff-box on his person, that temporarily reduces the human body in size, 
he escapes through the barred window of his cell and releases his pupils. They escape from the Inquisition into a strange cliff-walled valley that runs toward the outer unknown desert. Not entered on this log is a plot dating from 1940-41 called The Feet of Sediva, which follows. Sediva, court dancer of Umaths, fame throughout Zutik for the grace of her dancing and the beauty of her feet, incurs the jealousy of Princess Lumlea, daughter of King Fantur of Zalak. By far the most difficult items are the four titles that follow the Garden of Adamfa. As Smith listed them, they are 18. Morthila, 19. The Two Necromancies, 20. The Scarlet Succubus, 21. The Infernal Companions. Smith apparently neglected to log the Master of the Crabs, finished August 1947, and a play, The Dead Will Cuckold You, 1950-51, revised 1956, both of which supposedly predate Morthelia, which he is known to have worked on as early as 1951 and completed in the autumn of 1952. As Andrew Smith pointed out in his article, The Dead Will Cuckold You, in print and manuscript, and an additional observation, The Dark Edelon, number 3, Winter, 1993, Smith's original title for the play was The Double Necromancy, which is so close to the two necromancies as to suggest that they are one and the same. This is certainly plausible from a chronological point of view, if one allows for the possibility that Morthelia was logged at the time of conception, not composition, much the way Shapes of Adamit and the Alkihest were. Another possibility is that Smith subsequently adapted the unproduced play as a now-lost short story called The Two Necromancies, as he once suggested he might do in a 1952 letter to De Camp. What, then, is The Infernal Companions? No such story or plot or fragment exist anywhere else in Smith's papers, nor do his extant letters mention such a tale. An undated list of stories includes it in a context that suggests a date prior to 1953. Two possibilities exist. The first is that this is a lost story. Smith lost several manuscripts during the early 1950s cabin fire, including the original draft to The Dead Will Cuckold You, forcing him to borrow a copy from correspondent Roy Squires, which he then revised in summer 1956 to produce the final draft. The Infernal Companions could be another of these paper victims. If this is so, then Smith's final tale of Zothique is lost forever. However, a more elegant theory posits the Infernal Companions as a working title for the unlogged The Master of the Crabs. For this to be the case, Smith would have had to have begun writing Morthelia, or at least conceived it, prior to September 1947. It's certainly possible and would explain his silence concerning the Infernal Companions in his letters. The story title might well refer to the wizards attending crabs. Of the surviving story plots, one is untitled, while another bears the working title, The Crabs of Viborus. Whatever the case, The Infernal Companions is either the final Zothique story or the last one Smith conceived. We will never know the truth. As it now stands, given the placement of the two necromancies after what is the final surviving Zothique tale, Morthelia, as well as the fact that as far as it is known, the 1956 revision of The Dead Will Cuckold You represents the last time Smith took pen to a tale of Zothique, it concludes this collection. The final fragment, Mandor's Enemy, is impossible to date with accuracy. 
given that the title appears in Smith's Black Book prior to the Morthelia plot, we have placed it accordingly, despite the notorious unreliability of the loose-leaf Black Book for such purposes. It may post-date Morthelia. Perhaps the greatest loss to the Zothique cycle is the Scarlet Succubus, which Smith described in a 1953 letter to L. Sprague de Camp as a projected short novel of Zothique, which I'm carrying in my head. The conception takes a hint from Balzac's terrific yarn, The Succubus, in the droll stories, and will exploit the imaginative and mystic possibilities of sex, an angle that seems rather neglected in this day of raw and mundane realism. Although entered on his master log of Zothique stories, Smith is not known to have commenced writing what might have been his ultimate chronicle of Earth's last continent. If ever started, this promising story must have been lost in the same tragic fire that conceivably consumed the infernal companions, if not the two necromancies. No plot survives, but inasmuch as Smith first spoke of the Scarlet Succubus as early as June 1945, this date lends a measure of chronological credence to the theory that the Master of the Crabs and the Infernal Companions are identical. Beyond those dim ghosts, only tattered demi-lion rags remain. A couplet, possibly a false start to a second poem of Zothique, is found late in Smith's Black Book, where Xanthic sailed on whitened waters ran, some Zerbic blown from Yoros towards Ayer. Lastly, also from the Black Book, comes an epigram, perhaps the final Zothikian lines ever penned, with which, as Smith himself might say, it seems meet to close this volume. Said Simigo, the iconoclast of Zothique, bear a hammer with thee always, and break down any terminus on which is written, So far shalt thou pass, but no farther go. The end of Zothique, postscript, Will Murray.